Hey everyone, it's TK Friday, and today I have something a little different for you. Today we're going to be discussing linear profiles, and this is something new that Tony Kuiper is doing. He's creating linear profiles. We're going to talk about them today. I'm going to show you how you can use them and get them, and by the way, it won't cost you a cent. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I hope everyone is doing great out there. I'm excited about today's episode. It's about linear profiles. We're going to discuss today, or I'm going to discuss what linear profiles are and how you can use them and how you can get these special linear profiles for your particular camera. And then I'll show you how to install the profiles and how to use the profiles. I'll do a demonstration and I'll be going over a lot of the different benefits of using the linear profiles. So stay tuned and stick with me to the end. By the way, I'm going to link you to two of Tony's website pages. One is this particular page where you can read up about the profiles. I'm going to go over some of this stuff for you, but you can go and read it, read up on it yourself here. And this is where you're going to find the profile for your camera. And if you don't have, if Tony doesn't have your camera listed, I'll show you how you can uh, get Tony to make that profile for you, where to send your information to. So stay tuned for that. So this is one of the web pages. The other web page I'm going to link you to in the uh, description below is this page on how to install the linear profiles. Now I'm going to show you how to install the linear profiles, but you're also going to have this documentation that you could go through. You know, some people like to read documentation and follow the instructions. And if you like to do that, you'll have this page that you can do that, or you can just watch me do it. In this video, I'll be installing the uh, linear profile for my Canon 5D Mark II. Let me start out with what is a linear profile. Now, I'm going to read this from uh, Tony's documentation. A profile is the set of instructions that tells Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, or other raw processing software how to display the data from a raw file captured by a digital camera. The conventional profile is a non-linear, not a straight line, as shown by the red curve in the attached figure. So you notice, this is what a typical Adobe profile would look like. See this red line, this curved line here on this curve? And it's really boosting up the midtones here. But a linear profile is a straight line. Now there are really advantages to working with linear profiles. By the way, whenever you're working with Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, you are working with profiles. And you'll notice right here at the top of the list, it says profile in Lightroom here. And there's a drop down menu here. When I click this, this shows your favorite profiles here in this list. And uh, you also have browse where you can click on browse. And when you do, it opens up a bunch of different profiles. And inside of here, here's your favorites list, okay? And then you have your Adobe uh, Raw uh, profiles. And if you click this, you see a list of the Adobe Raw profiles. And then underneath that, you'll have your uh, camera matching profiles. I have five for my uh, Canon 5D Mark II. Here they are. Now, anytime you uh, see these stars, anytime you click and select one of these stars, that profile will end up inside of this favorites list. So after I close this, uh, this profile, here's your favorites list right here. If you click on this, you'll see all your favorite uh, profiles in here. So bear that in mind because we're going to come back to that a little bit later. Now we know that a profile is a set of instructions that tells Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw how to display the data from a raw file. And if we, and if we go further on down this list, uh, we can see different things here. And I'm not going to go over everything here because I'm going to actually demonstrate in the video. But you can go and read up on all this information. And this next point says the image looks darker and flatter at the beginning. Now, when you see uh, a linear profile, it's going to look different than what you're used to seeing. And I'll demonstrate that here shortly. Um, but then... Tony gives us a bunch of different things that we can try. So he says, uh, start up by using the auto button, or you could go fully manual. You can combine auto and manual, and that's what I do, and I'll show you how, how that all works. But let's take a look right here. Potential advantages of linear profiles. Number one, more flexibility 
in Lightroom and Camera Raw since sliders often provide additional room for adjustments. Now that's a big thing right there. That really is helpful. Secondly, more predictable adjustments in Lightroom Camera Raw since the image responds better to slider movements. Next, better shadow and highlight recovery. Then richer but not overly saturated colors. Next, hue, saturation, and luminance adjustments work better. And next, we have more pleasing raw conversions. And lastly, expose to the right. If you like to expose to the right when you're making your initial exposure in your camera, you'll have greater potential since applying a linear profile darkens the image. So you'll get better results if you're one of those who like to expose to the right when you're taking your initial shot with your camera. Next. Linear profiles are camera specific. I'm going to read this to you. Each camera model requires a different linear profile. Once installed, Camera, RAW, or Lightroom will only display a linear profile option if there is an installed linear profile that matches the camera from which the RAW file was originally produced. Linear profiles for a variety of different camera models can be downloaded at the bottom of this page. And I'm going to show you right down here you'll find a list of all the cameras that Tony has made linear uh, profiles for. And then you can just click on that particular camera. If you don't find your camera in the list, if you'll notice right, uh, where is it? Oh, here it is. Note, if you don't see your camera listed, please contact me to make arrangements to have it added. Just click this uh, contact me link and you'll get this box up here. Give Tony your email address, tell him that you can't find your profile, and he'll, he'll email you back and tell you what he needs. He's going to need a camera raw file from your camera so he can make that profile, and he'll tell you how to send it to him. Now, one thing I will say, sometimes when you're sending a raw file through email, sometimes emails won't send a large file. So if you have something like Google Drive or something like that, you might want to Put that file up on a Google Drive and give Tony a link for that Google Drive. Okay, I'm just just saying that just in case the email doesn't work. I'm going to go back to that previous page now. Download the PDF on how to install and use Linear Profile. So just click on this link, and here's the uh, installing Linear Profile instructions. And like I said at the beginning of the tutorial, I'm ha I'm going to have all of these links for you in the uh, description below this video, so you you'll be able to get to these uh, pages really simply. Okay, so you want to download your profile for your camera. In my case, it's a EOS 5D Mark II. So I would click right here. And it says, please review the end user license agreement and click the checkbox above if you agree to its terms. Okay, so X out of here. Here's the checkbox, by the way. It's right here. And it's uh, indicate that you agree to the end user license agreement. And you can click here and read that end user license agreement. And if you're satisfied with that, click this checkbox. And now click on... EOS 5D Mark II or whatever camera you have, click that and that's going to lead you to this uh, web page and you'll find this is your linear profile. It's not going to cost you anything. It is totally no charge for that. And then all you need to do is go to the free checkout, click on free checkout and give him, give Tony your email address, confirm that email address, give him your full name, company name is optional, and you can subscribe for the newsletter and updates. I highly recommend that you do that because anytime Tony comes up with new updates and things, you'll be notified as well as you'll get his really great newsletter. And then just click on free checkout. And you notice it says invalid email because I don't have my email in here. I've already downloaded this. But just click on free checkout and follow the instructions. And I believe what will happen is you'll be sent an email with a download link. And click on that download link and then you can download your profile. Once you download your profile, it's going to look like this. Mine says Linear Canon EOS 5D Mark II Zip. Now you need the zip file. You're going to be installing the zip file not the DCP file. Now for the way I understand this for Windows users, you will always have the zip file and you have to unzip things if you want to unzip them. But sometimes Mac computers will automatically unzip the file for you, but you don't want that in this case. So if your Mac computer unzips your file, you'll see a DCP file here. All you need to do is right click it and click on compress linear Canon EOS 
5D Mark II DCP. Just click that and it'll put it back, as you can see, in a zip file. So that's very important. If, if it's not a zip file, you need to make it a zip file. And that's how you do it. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, delete these two files here. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, and I hope you've stuck with me up till this point because you needed all that information. Sorry about that, but you needed that information to get to this point right now. So now we're going to install it into both Adobe Camera Raw and into Lightroom. And to do that, you want to open up Photoshop. We're going to do this from Photoshop. What you need to do is open either a JPEG file or a TIFF file into Photoshop. And right now, you'll notice I have a JPEG file. It's an 8-bit file. It doesn't really matter. All we need to do is get to Adobe Camera Raw. Now, if you have uh, Tony's TK7 combo panel, you can click ACR right here, and that'll open up Adobe Camera Raw. Or you can come up here to Filter and choose uh, Camera Raw Filter. Either way, it's going to open up the Adobe Camera Raw Filter. Now, what you need to do is look for this icon right here, and you'll notice it's Presets. And click on this Presets icon, and then you see the three dots right here. I call this a hamburger menu. Give this a click, and you're going to find Import Profiles and Presets. So what you want to do next is click on that, and your file browser will open up. And what you need to do next is navigate your file browser to that linear profile that you downloaded. And then it's just a simple matter of uh, clicking on that uh, zip file and click import. At this point, the profile is installed. So here's what I want you to do next. Click cancel, get out of Adobe Camera Raw, come up to a uh, file and click on open and point your computer to wherever a camera raw file lives and open up a camera raw file that you want to edit or just any old raw file just to check this out. So I'm going to open this camera raw file right here. Click on open. And when I do that, Adobe camera raw opens up and you'll notice when I come over here to my profiles and click here, you'll notice right down here. I have this um, new category called profiles. When I click this, you'll see here's my linear Canon EOS 5D profile living right in here. Now, if I click this little star right here, it becomes a favorite. And so now when I go back and click under my uh, profile drop down with all my favorites, you'll find there's my linear Canon EOS 5D profile right here. Now, you know, of course, I can click on my Adobe profile, and that's what it looks like with the Adobe profile. Now, let me check click on the linear EOS 5D profile. Notice the difference in the image when I do. You notice how it gets a lot more flatter looking and it's also darker, but that's what a linear profile starts out looking like. And next up, I'm going to show you uh, Lightroom where I'll actually make the adjustments in Lightroom, but you can work from either Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. That profile will live in both of those. And now I'm in Lightroom. Now, I just want to say this. If you installed that profile in Photoshop while Lightroom was open, it's important that you close Lightroom and then open Lightroom back up because you won't see the profile living in Lightroom until you shut it down and open it back up if it was open at the time of the install. That's kind of important. Now let's see if our profile is here in Lightroom. So let's come over to the profiles. And let's click on this icon here with the four squares. And here's our profiles, our favorites, our Adobe Raw camera management. Now I have a new set called profiles and there's one profile inside it, but let's look inside here and see, ah, there it is, the linear Canon profile. Now remember, if I wanna keep it in that drop down list, I have to star it and make it a favorite, which I've just done. So now let's go ahead and close this. Now let's click on the profile drop down list and look, there it is right there. Now it's only going to show up when you have a raw file that's associated with that camera profile. Right now I'm using the camera standard profile. I'm going to click on the linear profile and notice how the image gets darker and a lot flatter looking. Now this is going to give us more responsive adjustments. It's actually going to give you uh, better edits in the long run. And I'll show you how I make my adjustments using the uh, linear profile. I like to start out by clicking auto 
and seeing what kind of results I get. And right off the bat, that looks really nice. Now you'll notice that I'm clipping my highlights here. So I got to make some adjustments here. And I generally start out again with auto and then I go from there. So right off the bat, I'm going to take my whites and pull those back just till I get rid of that clipping in the whites. But that image looks really nice. And uh, we'll take a look at the rest of the adjustments here. I might pull my exposure back just a little bit, just a tiny wee bit, not much. And the contrast, I think, looks pretty good. Uh, the highlights, I may pull that back just a little bit more. I don't want to have any blown out highlights, but I'm good if we look at my histogram. And then we'll look at our shadow recovery. It's pretty good. I might just open up the shadows a tiny bit more, not much. I set my white point, my black points. Uh, I'm clipping slightly, but I think it looks pretty good. I'm going to just maybe move this to the right a little bit. Let's just get rid of the clipping in the blacks right there. Next up, we have the presence uh, section here. And I'm not going to mess with texture clarity or dehaze. Everything looks really good in my opinion. But I usually wait on that anyway because I like to denoise my images using Topaz Denoise AI. So I don't really like to adjust those adjustments until I get into Photoshop. As far as vibrance, I might give it a little bit more vibrance. And I think the saturation looks pretty good where it is. And then after I make these adjustments, I, I like to go into HSL and just maybe touch up uh, some of the different um, colors here. So maybe let's check my greens out. Let me see what happens if I give myself a little more green. Yeah, I might give myself a little bit more green. Let's play with the yellows a little bit. Maybe just a slight bit of yellows here. Now, as far as my blues, maybe I'll just... Um, now, the blues are pretty good. I might just take my blues back slightly. And uh, let's check our reds out here. Let me pull up the reds and see. There's not much happening in reds there, so that's pretty good. I'm just going to double-click this, set it back. Let me try orange. Is any oranges in there? Yeah, there's a little bit of orange in there. I might pull up in the orange a little bit, like so. And I think that looks really good. Let me shut this off. There's before and there's after. So just the few subtle little changes in there and that's basically it and then i always do my typical lens corrections i make sure i have remove chromatic aberrations turned on and enable profile corrections turned on and for my workflow and this may not apply to you if you don't use topaz denoise ai or sharpen ai for my workflow under detail i um shut my sharpening off and my noise reduction, and I just leave the default color setting of 25. And I find that's the best setting when working with Denoise AI and Sharpen AI. And that's basically it, but there you go, linear profiles. Now I asked Tony when I was talking to him the other day, you know, a question, I said, you know, what do you like best about uh, using linear profiles? And he said, you know, much more responsive sliders, your basic sliders and your HSL color sliders. And he also said you bring a better image into Photoshop from Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. And he said that means less work for you to do in Photoshop. So I think it's some pretty good benefits there. You need to give these uh, linear profiles a try. And there are other software companies out there right now that are working with linear profiles too. They're giving you those options. And hopefully Photoshop at some point will uh, jump onto this uh, linear profile bandwagon. But until then, we have uh, Tony Kuiper's profiles and they're free. So go ahead and grab your linear profile for your camera and give this a try. And let me know what you think in the comments section below this video. Well, there it is, everyone. Uh, go ahead and download the uh, linear profiles for your camera. I've linked Tony Kuiper's uh, website pages for the uh, downloads for the profiles, as well as the instruction sheets. And on this page, Linear Profile Repository, if we go down near the bottom, you'll see additional information about linear profiles. Go ahead and check those out. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like, share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time, but until then, happy editing!